I've won monomials. So what's a monomial? Well, a monomial is a single term. And I find one of the best ways to do this is to say what is and is not a monomial. It's like 4x squared, 3xy, 2, things like that. A radical is not a monomial because it can't be to a fractional power. And that's the same as x to the 1 half. A negative exponent or exponent on the bottom of a fraction is not a monomial. Constant is just a number. 7, 0, negative 2, pi, any number. doesn't really matter. Coefficient is the number out in front of a term. So in this case, it would be 4. The degree is the power. So it would be a degree of 3. You might want to look at a bigger monomial, like a 5x squared y to the third, because it can be confusing. This has got a degree of 5. You just have to add these two together. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And a power is just x to the n. So the power is the n, but it's any variable that's being raised to a power. So there's a bunch of problems we can do here. Um, the one I like to do is actually x to the third times x squared because that's x to the fifth. So 3 plus 2 equals 5. Um, and we remember this because x to the third times x squared is x times x times x times x times x. That's x to the fifth. Um, and a lot of people get that confused with this, this is simply 2x squared. If you're adding a thing plus a thing, in this case an x squared plus an x squared, you get 2x squared. So a lot of people uh, get those confused, trying to keep them straight. This we distribute. And we get x to the 6th, y to the 10th. And this causes world problems because people try and do this. Try and do this. But it does not equal x to the 6th plus y to the 10th. Because we're adding here. And we're multiplying here. Two very different animals. You have to pay attention. Make sure you get that. x to the 7th over x squared is x to the 5th subtract 7 minus 2 equals 5. And whenever you have negative exponents, you immediately take them, flip them to the other side of the fraction. So you have x to the negative 4th in the numerator, put it in the denominator, and get rid of the negative. You have y to the negative 3rd in the denominator, put it in the numerator, get rid of the negative. And that takes some getting used to. So here's two practice problems, very challenging. I deliberately picked hard problems. Um, go ahead and give them a shot. Pause the recording if you want, because I'm going to do them right now. So I'm going to distribute my squared. I get 1 ninth x squared, y to the eighth. I'm going to just do this twice. I get 9y squared to the fourth. And this I get 1 ninth x squared, y to the 8th. Now there's going to be 9 to the 4th, 9 times 9 times 9 times 9, y to the 8th. One of these 9s will cancel. And this will be 3 9s, 9 times 9 is 81, times 9 is 729, x squared, y to the 16th. And the other one, 
also pretty tricky. 9, x to the 6, y to the 4th. So I've distributed the 2 and I've moved the negative to the bottom. And I'm actually going to do this one differently just for the fun of it. I'm going to make multiply these two together and make this to the negative 4th. So we get negative 4 to the negative 4th. The negative will vanish. The y will become to the 16th. The four will become to the two hundred fifty. It will be two hundred fifty-six, and the three will be x to the twelfth on the bottom. So we get nine y to the twelfth because the sixty minus four is twelve. Twelve minus six is six. Two hundred fifty-six x to the sixth. These are challenging problems. I have a lot of practice for you because they are so challenging. By the way, x to 0 is 1, and it has to be because if we look at anything over itself, 4 divided by 4 is 1. Therefore, x to the 4th over x to the 4th is 1. Although, watch out for 0 divided by 0. It's a big question. And at the same time, what we just practiced was x to the 4 minus 4 is x to the 0. So that has to be 1 because these have to match up. A little bit of a problem for people there, but... No big deal. So we try these two. And I'll do them now. We get C squared E to the fifth over B to the third. And here I'll have to bring it down. This cancels, gives a seven. Uh, the B seven cancels and the C to the fifth comes up. So negative C to the fifth over 7a to the 6th. That's about it. Now some scientific notation. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty. You should have seen this before. This is in standard notation. In scientific notation it would be 0.1 times 10 to the 6, and all you do is count the zeros 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and put the decimal after the first number. Here we do the opposite, count it the other way 3, 4, 5, 6, 3.45 times 10 to the negative 6. That's it. So now go back and forth. 4.3 times 10 to the ninth. 5.1 times 10 to the negative third. 0 0.12345. 2.12345. And I always check once I'm done, make sure I did it right. So why did I just blow through that? Because we can use it to multiply without a calculator. Multiply these two. 1 times 3.3 .3 is just 3.3. .3. And now we're multiplying 10 to the power, so it's 10 to the 8th. Over here we divide 4.2 divided by 2.1. We get 2.0 times 10 to the 1st. We could also write that as 20 if we wanted. So it's just a way to do problems without a calculator. You could of course use a calculator to do these problems, but it's kind of nice to be able to figure out what's going on in the real world and also do it with a calculator. So that's it. There's going to be a ton of problems, so make sure you practice. Good luck.